Okay, continuing the series, find the inverse function of f. Here we have a kind of a different looking function. We have a rational function here. The process is the same. The algebra is a little bit different. So let's start the process. The process, of course, first would be replace the function notation with y notation. So here's y is equal to 3x plus 2 over 2x minus 5. This is where people do it a little bit differently. There are two strategies here. One is to exchange x and y, is x and y now. Uh, the way I usually do it is I solve for x, and then I change them out afterwards. Either way will work. So I'm going to just solve for x. So solve for x. This is kind of going to be kind of strange looking, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just start trying to take this in pieces. So I'm going to divide by both sides by the denominator of this. So I'm going to just let me see, 2x minus 5 here. You see that these two will cross out, won't they? Then we'd have y times this 2x minus 5 here. It would leave us with 3x plus 2 here. Of course, I'm going to distribute this to simple algebra. I'm going to distribute it here and here. And we'll get 2xy minus 5y is equal to 3x plus 2. <coughs> Now what I want to do is I want to gather all the terms that have x on one side or the other and those terms that do not include an x value on the opposite side. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this algebra really quickly. So I'm going to add negative 2 to both sides and I'm going to subtract 2xy from both sides. xy. And if this was an algebra 1 class, I, I would certainly be doing this more uh, methodically, but uh, hopefully you can follow my math here. So hopefully what we get here is I added this, so I have negative 5y minus 2, right? We took negative 2 from both sides. is equal to 3x minus 2xy, right? So we're starting to get there now. What we're going to do now is, right, we're solving for x, so let's factor out x. So factor out x. And that should give us x times 3 minus 2y, right? And this side stayed the same, negative 5y minus 2. We're going to have to deal with that in a second here. Also, now, of course, hopefully you can see what I'm going to do next. If I want to get <coughs> x by itself, then what I would do is, right, this, this is multiplication here. So this is a factor, so I'll just factor, divide that factor out. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3 minus 2y. 3 minus 2y, and that gives us, right, that gives us x is equal to negative 5y minus 2 over 3 minus 2y, and I think if you don't mind, I'm going to just switch these two terms around so I can see it better, just have some fun. So this negative 2y, this, this negative 2y right here, plus 3, so here's plus 3 here, and that's what x equals. Uh, the other thing that you might do here is this. You might look at this and simplify this out a little bit. And you might say that x is equal to negative 5y plus 2. Actually, I factored out this negative sign here. And it would go here. Because if you look at the bottom, right, I take this negative sign. Remember, it doesn't matter where the negative sign is. So I can have the negative sign here, here, or here. If I bring this negative sign down here, right, and then have this negative 2y plus 3. I distributed here. Everything cleans up. The lead coefficients are both positive. That just kind of cleans it up. So that would make this 2y minus 3, wouldn't it? So 2y minus 3. 2y minus 3. I can remove these. All right. So I think that gets us to the right place. And then, of course, now, finally, next step is, right, switch x and y same same process we've been using here so instead of having x equals this thing we'll just switch x and y so we have y equals 5x plus 2 over 2x minus 3 okay so then of course we have to switch this back out here because this is the inverse this is the inverse Okay. This next thing I'm going to do, you don't have to do this, so please keep this in mind. 
you drive yourself crazy. I'm scared to death I sent somebody home today and that they are going to actually put this in. Remember that f of x, f of x was equal to 3x plus 2 over 2x minus 5. Let me just go back and check so I mess that up. 3x plus 2, right, and there it is. 3x plus 2, x minus 5, right? Again, I don't expect you to do this unless you're asked to. Let me say it again. Do not go proving inverses unless you're directed to prove them because this one is a real pain in the neck. I went ahead and did it just, well, to see if I could do it, frankly. So it looks like this. Remember that if you're going to prove it, you have to prove it two ways. I'm only going to do one of the ways here. You're supposed to prove that this is true, that the inverse of f of f of x is equal to x. So I had to set out to prove this, and I'm only going to do it quickly. I'm only going to do it this one time because it is a real pain. So I'll start with f prime and x is, right? I'm going to start with the pink part or the purple part, whatever you're seeing, is 5, right? x plus 2, right? 5x plus 2 over 2x minus 3. And that's this stuff here. Then I'm going to fill in these blanks. See, I'm going to put in 3x plus 2 over x minus 5. And look, I see what's going to happen here. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to get a common denominator. I'm going to multiply this by 2x minus 5 over 2x minus 5. And down here, I have to do the same thing, 3x plus 2. I'm filling in f of x into the inverse function, right? 2x minus 5. Because I'd like to add this term and this one, I'm going to multiply this by 2x minus 5 over 2x minus 5. I'm going to do all this math. What I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this to this, this to this, right? Etc. So it will look like this, I believe. When I distribute, I'm going to get is equal to 15x. 5 times 3x is 15x, right? Plus 10. Plus 2 times 2 is 4x plus 4x. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10, right? And, of course, all of that is over this 2x minus 5. 2x minus 5. So far, so good. This division sign right here is this one right here. So I'm going to continue my work, and I'm going to multiply this in. 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times 2 is 4, so plus 4. I'm going to distribute this now, negative 3, right? Negative 3 times this is negative 6x. Negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15 isn't it? All over 2x minus 5. My gosh, what a mess, right? So this right here is this right here. Right? I've just simplified this out the best that I can. I'm going to combine like terms here. I get positive 10 plus negative 10 is 0. 15x's plus 4x's is 19x's. So I'm going to just simplify some more. 19x is over 2x minus 5. 2x minus 5. Keeping in mind, this is called a solidus. I mean, this solidus is this one. This division bar is that one. When I simplify all this stuff at the bottom, I get 6x's minus 6x's is 0x's. And 4 plus 15 is 19. All over 2x minus 5. Now, of course, we have a complex fraction. We have complex fractions. This is A over B over C over D is actually the same as A over B times D over C. That means this thing, this denominator, comes up as its reciprocal. So I'm going to write this starting with the numerator. The numerator stays as it was, 19x over 2x minus 5. This thing, this is the CD, so it comes up as its reciprocal, which is 2x minus 5 over 19. This is a quantity. This is a quantity. So they cancel, don't they? They're the same. 2x minus 5, 2x minus 5. So we end up with 19x over 19. 
is actually equal to x. So there's our proof. Remember, after that, we'd have to go back and prove that f of the inverse of f of x is also equal to x. You want to do that? Go for it. Um, good work. Remember, though, if, <coughs> if you're not specifically asked to prove that a function is the inverse of the other function, you do not have to do that. So in the case of the homework that I gave you, I'm not asking you for the proof unless I specifically ask you to. And I didn't. So keep working. Good work. I'm proud of you.